Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at flying the Bell 407. Now this is not a helicopter that needs much of an introduction. This is an excellent piece of machinery. It's very, very capable. It's very, very quick. Uh, it's not the hardest thing to fly, but there are some kind of weird little quirks. And the first one, of course, is if you've been flying this entire time with the Cabri G2, you'll notice the rotor spins the opposite direction, which now means all your nice muscle memory for your feet is now completely reversed. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, climbing aboard this thing, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, like I said, if you've been in one of these before, they're pretty cozy helicopters with great visibility here. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to make sure our collective is all the way down. Um, the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure our throttle is in the off position. Now, the interesting thing is, and I'm not sure if this is modeled correctly or not correctly, because I don't have one of these in my backyard to try this on. But my understanding is you can't start this thing unless you're basically being careful with the throttle position so you don't get a hot start. But uh, we'll deal with that little anomaly a little later on. So take a look there. We'll look around. Everything else is good. Switches are good. Note, by the way, that your propeller control that you use in the cabri does not control the throttle. The throttle is its own beast in this particular helicopter. Float it up here. Uh, we have a couple different switches. Uh, basically, we're going to do kind of everybody's uh, left to right thing. We'll flip that sucker on. It's a stress switch. It's supposed to be for the radar altimeter. It does nothing. Uh, pedal stop. We're going to go ahead and leave that in the on position. That's very useful to us. It basically stops us from cranking on the pedals the ones too hard. We have our boost pumps. So we're going to make sure they're both on. The system on the helicopter is kind of neat. You'll notice this one's got this little yellow box around it. It's because the way the fuel system transfers fuel out of the left side. So basically, this is a way we can kind of fill it so that it goes over to the engine itself. Kind of neat how the fuel cells work. But of course, if this guy fails, we're relying on this one to basically pressurize the system. If this one fails, we still have this one at least. <laughs> it's kind of tricky. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make my way down. I'm going to go fit with the force trim, leave the air conditioning alone. Uh, the heater's looking pretty good right now. We're going to go ahead and make our way. Like I said, just kind of do. We don't need the particle separator. There's no dust storm or anything for today. Automatic trim, anti collision's going to come on. We're going to flip on the battery switch and go blind. I don't know why the person before me thought they needed to crank everything this high, but uh, they did. So if that's an issue for you, you can come up here where it says a light, and you can just sit there. I like to hold my mouse over it and just roll the scroll wheel. Uh, that seems to work pretty well. Again, set these to a comfortable level. Again, depending on what you're flying. Oh my god, that's still ridiculous. Oh boy, I don't know who the guy was before me, but they cranked on that. That's still too high. You know what? Forget it. Zero. You get... Oh, let's try one. Eh. Zero. Sweet. All right, so a couple things we want to check when we float down here. I'm going to go ahead and float my head down. And we have a bunch of warning lights, so we can test them, of course, by pressing this. You're going to get everything here. It's going to kind of come right down here. You can see all the different lights. You've got the big red ones are the ones that mean we're going to probably crash and fire or die or something like that. You've got the yellow ones, which are warning, and, of course, you have these as well to let you know something is not working at this time. Other thing we like to check, of course, too, is if we kind of float down here, you have your fuel quantity. You're probably like, why is it that we have 1,200 pounds? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Right now, we're carrying uh, about that much fuel. If I crank this thing all the way to 100%, you're going to notice it spikes up to be about by the particular weight. You'll also notice that our max allowable fuel is 780, which is exactly how much we're carrying here. Now, one of the neat systems is here is you can press and hold this and see what your forward fuel tank has, and you can let go of it, and it'll let you know what your total fuel tank has. We also have this FADEC mode. Um, this is for the engine. I recommend leaving this on automatic so that we don't have any engine issues later on. Uh, you're going to find a couple anomalies from what I've heard, but we'll see what I mean. So everything's all set. If we uh, pop outside real quick, uh, we can see that we're all ready to go. We've got all of our warning lights all kind of all blinking and flashing, letting everybody ready to know that we're going to get this thing started in just a few minutes. So what we're going to do to get this thing started, of course, we're going to make sure anti-collision light is set in the on position. We're going to make sure all this stuff looks pretty good. Now, this I thought was a little bit of an interesting anomaly. So if you come down here, you'll notice my throttle is off, which generally with helicopters, especially gas turbines, you don't use fuel until you get a high enough RPM. But watch what happens if you try to hit the starter when this is in the off position. Nothing. So for whatever reason, now when they designed this, they designed it to be on the on position. So what I'm doing is I'm holding my mouse and just rolling my scroll wheel until it snaps it to the idle position. You notice we have off, you notice we have idle, and you can actually see the little line there lined up. Now we can actually start the helicopter. Like I said, I don't know what the deal with that is. So to start it, super duper simple, we're just going to come over here to the start button. We just press and hold for a moment and release. And what that's going to do is that's going to kick off our starter here. So you can see our NG is going to start coming up right away. You're also going to notice that that rotor is going to start slowly start cranking here because, again, uh, we don't have the same technology we have in the cabaret. Big number we're watching right now is going to be our main gas temperature. You can see right now we're about 375. We have our hand on the throttle in case that gets away on us. The other thing we want to watch out for is our feet. Um, we probably want to make sure we have our foot on that left pedal right now getting ready. 
Uh, gas generator is coming up very, very quickly again. This is all automatic thanks to the FADEC here that controls a lot of it. But in the event that this starts to fly away on us, we want to make sure we're going to be quick enough to go ahead and shut that off. I'm going to go ahead and close up the fuel valve cover. It looks pretty good. Give it just a few more moments to kind of catch up to us. Getting a little warm. Gas temperature is a little high. Torque is a little high. Again, this is that startup procedure here. I'm amazed that torque can even get to that high. You're going to get a warning light right now. This is the warning uh, check instrument. Uh, the reason we're getting that warning right now is because our gas temperature is very, very high. As you can see, it's just starting to spike. I'm going to give it just a little squeeze of fuel here. Nothing too, too excessive. And all we're trying to do here is uh, get that rotor going so that we can finally cool things down. Uh, it's getting pretty warm, but uh, for startups, it's not unusual. There it goes. Nice. And you can see everything cools right back down. Again, our maximum start temperature, we have two different lines for that. We have the, oh God, fix it, and the, eh, that's pretty typical for starts. And you can see once we really get going with the rotor, everything starts calming down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to slowly roll this into the fly position. That's going to be 90% right there. And now we're done with this throttle. We don't have to touch it again. The governor, of course, will jump in and grab onto things. All this is going to be handled by the FADEC, and we don't have to stress out about it too much. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go float up here and I'm going to go ahead and take care of our last couple switches here. Pop up. Whoa! I wish it was just a little easier. It's just easier in um, other kind of games, but that's all right. So we're going to go ahead and pop on our flight instruments. So we're going to need those in a minute, I'm sure. Uh, these are pretty much all set. Like I said, if we were dealing with a situation where we had nastiness, we could turn that on, like if we had a dust storm or something along those lines. I'm happy with all the rest of the options here. Uh, we could just leave the pedal stop off, especially if you're doing kind of a low altitude maneuvers here where you're really going to need the full pedal capability, but I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. Next thing what we want to do is we just want to take a look at all our warning lights here. Again, this is reminding us we have that pedal stop feature enabled. Like I said, we can disengage it if we wanted. All it's going to do, like I said, is limit the amount of travel that this particular thing has. And it's just going to give you a little heads up. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> Taking a look at our instruments. Our instruments all look pretty good. Uh, we've set our altitude. Everything's pretty good in that sort of a sense. I mean, all of our gauges are inside the green. Everything is looking pretty darn good for our particular flight today. So we're going to start by doing our quick little hover check. Uh, this helicopter's hover check process is uh, pretty straightforward. It's the same as the cabaret. The only thing you have to remember is a couple different instruments. The first one is if you move the cyclic, you're going to have a warning about the centering of the cyclic. If I bring the cyclic back to the center, you're going to see that little light comes out. That's just to let you know that things are not centered on while you're on the ground while there's pressure on the skids that's just kind of a neat little feature it does the other thing you want to watch out for too is uh, when we're doing this you're going to every once in a while you could possibly get the check instrument warning and that usually means that you're running your engine too hot and again as we get rolling you're not going to have as much difficulty with that so what i'm going to do is do our classic little j so i'm going to look between my legs normally what you do is you come back you kind of come to the left a little bit again just make the little letter j here and uh, the reason of course we're doing a left j as opposed to a right j is because of the rotation of the rotor now the way they engineered this particular model in flight sim is instead of doing the j it's less of a J and it's more of a little bit to the left. That seems to be about what you need to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smoothly apply collective here. Uh, remember, because this helicopter is we've gotten that rotor going the other way, it's going to be left foot instead of right foot here. Give it just a little bit more and you can see it gets a little light on the skids. And you've got that nice little warning here. You've also got the check instrument warning and that is how long it takes to overheat. Now notice this helicopter has a very strong tendency to want to pull to the left there. So go ahead and give it just a little bit more torque. And we're just going to come right off the ground there. Nice. So now we're off the ground and we're airborne. Now notice you really, really got to keep this thing tipping to the left in order to keep it straight. That's just because of the nature of this one. I'm looking at my gas temperature. It's pretty darn hot. So I'm going to get this thing going pretty much right away here. Get us uh, rolling over to our handy dandy runway. Again, when we're hover taxiing, we don't need to get going too much. This is a much more capable helicopter than the Cabri, and it is also significantly faster. So when you're ripping around with it, you really got to get ready for it to kind of get away from you. Just going to kind of let it glide up. Temperatures finally come back down. Nice. A yeah, very, very stable helicopter. You don't have to do anything too, too excessive to get this thing where you want it to go. But I can tell we're a little on the heavy side here. Looks pretty good. And now we're going to go ahead and line ourselves up with the wind. So we got a little bit of a gusting wind there today, nothing too excessive. Now, because you have a stability augmentation system on this helicopter, when you turn, it's going to have a weird kind of countering force to it as you're maneuvering. That looks pretty good right there. And we go ahead and tip the helicopter forward. We're going to smoothly apply collective. And this thing just goes. It's nothing like the cabaret that kind of has a little bit of drama. You just look away and all of a sudden you're going this fast. We enter translational lift around 30, 40 knots. And we are on the way that effortlessly. 
not bad, not bad at all. You also notice that our gas temperature has come right down because of course now we've got a little bit of speed and it's a much, much more stable kind of helicopter now. Now, because we have everything kind of set up with this auto trim, you're gonna find this to be a very, very polite helicopter to fly. You're not gonna be, of course, letting go of the controls at any point. If you were to do that, we'd do one of these things pretty much instantaneously. That is just the nature of how helicopters are. They're very, very tricky to operate. One thing we do have, if you look on the top of our cyclic, that's our little stick between our legs right there, I'm giving it a wiggle, is we do have the ability to actually trim things, which is uh, super duper awesome because unlike some of the other helicopters, we can actually sit here and dial in pretty much any setting that we need. So if I come down here, put the nose down, whoa, go ahead and give it a little bit of relaxation on the pedal. Go ahead and tap a couple clips of down trim. And you can see we can actually customize that. Uh, one thing we want to watch out for, of course, is uh, the rotor trim. Uh, the interesting thing here is uh, we don't have a really good yaw trim, which actually kind of surprises me because once these helicopters go going, uh, usually the weather vane effect kicks in and eliminates a lot of the need to be constantly applying a left collective or left anti-torque here. So flying this helicopter is uh, relatively straightforward. It's uh, the same thing as uh, flying any other helicopter. We want to operate this thing in a coordinated manner. Uh, one thing you want to keep an eye out, of course, of all times is all your different temperatures. You want to make sure your pressures are okay. You want to make sure you're not doing anything excessive. We have no automatic pilot on this particular version of this, which is kind of a bummer because these are really entertaining to watch them fly instrument approaches. And like anything, of course, uh, when we turn a helicopter, don't jam on the direction of the way, uh, pedal that you need to in the direction you're traveling because we don't have to deal with that adverse yaw that you do in a regular airplane. The collective pedals become much, much more important. I should say the anti-torque pedals, there we go again, become more important when we're actually going to go ahead and getting to low speed. That is just a heads up to let remind me that I've exceeded 200 feet. <laughs> it's kind of a nice little feature there. I'm just gonna go ripping. Of course, if you want to increase speed, we just have to increase torque. So I'm gonna go smoothly and apply the a little more collective here. And you can see the torque is coming up. Uh, the biggest limiting factor on this helicopter is usually not your torque. Usually what's going to be is your main gas temperature. Of course, as we slowly start really cranking on that collective, you'll notice that my torque is about 77.5, and you'll see that my main rotor RPM is up pretty high right now. I'll go ahead and push that collective a little bit further than it should go. And that's peak right there. My collective is now pulled all the way up into my uh, left side here. And uh, we are going, that's eh, about 110, so we're not moving slow here. So the next thing we have to watch out for is when we crank the collective like that, you're putting an awful lot of load on every single part of the transmission. You're putting a lot of load on the rotor itself. And thankfully, our little FADAC, which is that little computer, is trying to limit our capabilities here just a little bit to stop us from overheating. But if you watch carefully, you can see my main gas temperature starting to crawl up. You also notice that my gas generator is over 100%. And the next big indicator that you've overdone it is you're gonna actually watch my RPM slowly start to decrease there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly back that collective back out and put it back to a more reasonable level. It's gonna drop our speed to about 100 knots, which is, it might feel a little slow for a helicopter, but it's actually pretty average. And then we're in a pretty good shape here. Navigating this helicopter is exactly the same as navigating an airplane, with the exception of, of course, keep in mind, you gotta keep flying the helicopter and you can't just trim it out. But we have ourselves a GPS, we have ourselves some handy dandy nav radios, an HSI, everything that you're familiar with up until this particular point. All right, kind of come swing this way, looking pretty good. You can see the main highway here. I haven't been to Paris, France in a very, very, very long time, so it's always kind of fun to see how things have changed. And we're gonna come bring ourselves into our little deaf downwind. Now, landing this helicopter is a little bit more of a handful than landing uh, our cabri there. Uh, the reason being is you're just such a faster helicopter, your controls are a little less responsive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by floating my head up here real quickly here. And I'm going to go find our lucky pedal stop. I'm going to go ahead and switch that off there. So what that's going to do is it's going to give me just a little bit more response as far as the pedals goes. And that makes it a little bit easier to land. Bringing this thing down is uh, pretty straightforward. We're just, again, fly pretty coordinated and line ourselves up with a lovely runway there. Uh, what some people always like to ask is they say, um, so if I'm flying one of these uh, helicopters or whatever, am I allowed to let just land on the helipad? Uh, generally, that's not a thing. Uh, there are some airports, of course, uh, the one that I actually operate out of typically, does let you literally fly directly to the helipad. But when you do that, you kind of block a lot of traffic. So we've got ourselves a pretty strong crosswind coming from the right there. As you can see, I'm not really pointing down the runway. Landing this thing, pretty darn simple. What you're going to do is you're just going to slowly, smoothly reduce our collective. Remember, as you do this, you're going to have to start changing your feeding position just a little bit here. And we're just going to let the nose kind of come up. Now, when you do this, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to happen all simultaneously here. The helicopter is going to reduce speed, and you're going to have to change your feet position as you lose that translational lift. A little bit of left foot, a little bit of left foot, a little bit of left foot. 
a lot more collect there we go nice and you can see this helicopter slows almost down to a stop the other thing you're going to notice is my gas temperature spiked and you can see i'm getting that check instrument warning almost immediately now i don't know how they model this helicopter but i think that's slightly more sensitive than it's supposed to be getting ourselves down to the ground is relatively easy you're just going to insert to a hover a couple inches don't forget you have rotor and ground effect what you're going to do is just smoothly reduce the collective and just let the helicopter settle very gently as you get closer the ground effect gets stronger so you have to reduce the amount of collective that you're using simultaneously with it. Again, gentle commands. You're not here to plant it. Once we're on the ground, of course, slowly keep flying the helicopter. Remember this thing wants to fly. And we're just going to go ahead and drop the collective and complete our little landing here. Shutting this one down, that couldn't be simpler. Oh, what we're going to do, of course, is let everything cool back off a little bit. Why is that so high? I'm going to go ahead and I'll roll this thing the other way and check this out. You're going to get up into the idle position. The helicopter is immediately going to start slowing down just a tiny bit here. And then all we have to do is snap it to the off position. That's going to cut fuel off. You can hear we have about a million beeps that are going to fire all simultaneously on us as the end of the whole thing starts to slow down. Of course, if we wanted to, we can finish up our little procedure here. We can pop off. Notice we're having a FADEC degraded. I like, like, look at all the warning lights. I love it. And of course, when we're ready to really, really slow the rotor down and we're less than 40%, we have it. And there's a huge warning right here that says, please do not crank this thing unless the rotor is below 40%. Let's go ahead and take a look at our rotor RPM there. Ah, there we go. Now we can come up here and go ahead and engage the rotor brake. Now this is just like the other one. You press and hold. Oh, why is this one just not want to snap forward like every other game that ever does one of these kind of options here? Normally what you do is you just crank on the thing and that will go ahead and slow the rotor down to a stop. Uh, keep in mind there's usually quite a bit of resistance here when you do this. Once that rotor has stopped, I'm going to let it kind of figure itself out here. I'll go ahead and shut everything off that doesn't need to be off. And you enjoy.